DaVinci Resolve. Is it better on Windows or Mac? And let's talk about how our $5,000 Hack Pro compares to our $10,000 Mac Pro 2019. At the beginning of 2020, we received our Mac Pro 2019, and subsequently, we were retiring our Hackintosh that we had been using for the past few years. But before that, we wanted to run some comparisons and see if paying nearly double the cost for a computer was worth it. So we had two questions that we wanted answered. First, how does DaVinci Resolve perform on Windows versus Mac on the exact same hardware? And once that's settled, we then want to compare how does a $10,000 official Mac Pro compared to a nearly identical $5,000 Hackintosh computer, our Hack Pro. And answer the question of why we waste money editing on Macs and what's the point when Windows is cheaper. The computer that will run both Windows and Mac has a 10-core Intel Skylake XI9 processor. We've got 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM inside of it, and it's all packed on an ASUS Prime X299 motherboard. The operating systems and programs are running off a one terabyte Samsung NVMe M.2 drive. Because the i9 series runs really hot, we opted to go for a custom water loop that does an amazing job of keeping this thing cool. We've never seen the graphics card go above 30 degrees Celsius, and the processor has never surpassed 60 degrees Celsius. This is powered by an 850 watt Be Quiet power supply, and for the Windows versus Mac comparison, we'll be using a water-cooled NVIDIA 1080 Ti. Some people ask why aren't we comparing it to the 2080 Ti, and that's really because they're identical in terms of the performance when it comes to anything that's not using ray tracing. And when you've edited videos, you're not using ray tracing, so, and we don't game on it, so it doesn't really matter. Check the description below for a list of components used in this build. With those core items that we mentioned, and some additional items like 10 gigabit Ethernet cards and Thunderbolt cards. The total build cost was $5,500 when we built it a few years ago. For both these tests, we'll be using a project that our team filmed for a client over in New York. We wanted to use this project because it's a great test for what we're trying to go over. Everything was shot in 4K 10-bit. The B-roll was shot in 10-bit 4K at 60 frames per second. Everything was shot in S-Log3, so there's a lot of color grading that has to go on. And the project has some custom graphics animated in DaVinci Resolve using Fusion. So the computer has to work really hard to uncompress this as it's editing and rendering. So we've just turned on uh, the computer that we'll be doing our tests on. With that, I mean, for those of you who don't know, Hackintosh is a PC component built computer that is modified to run Macintosh natively. And it gives us this option. This is a bootloader that we've installed to where I can select between running Mac or running Windows. Okay, so right now I'm gonna push enter, boom. And you'll see a little Windows dinky winky, there we go. It would say Windows here, but we modified it just to be branded, because it's cool. Branding stuff is fun. Okay, there we go. We are in Windows, and then we can launch DaVinci Resolve. So we used the exact same project with the exact same footage on the exact same version of DaVinci Resolve on the exact same hardware. The only difference is that one set of renders was done in Windows OS and the other version was done in Mac OS. On opening the programs and loading a project, the load times were nearly identical. Sometimes Windows would be ahead by one or two seconds, sometimes Mac would be ahead one or two seconds. So it really didn't seem like there was much of a difference here. While editing, there was also no noticeable difference between speeds. It seemed exactly identical in both the startup times, project loading times, and editing times. So really it comes down to the render. How do the render times compare? At first, Mac was consistently winning by a few seconds over Windows. Then we did a little more digging, we realized that the Windows firmware for the NVIDIA card was outdated. So we went ahead and updated that. After we updated the Windows driver of the 1080 Ti, everything flipped a little bit and Windows started consistently winning. Kind of unfortunately, it's the only part of the test where we couldn't be exactly identical. And that's mainly because Mac stopped support for NVIDIA Pascal processors in 2018. So with that on the Mac, we're working with firmware that's two years or more out of date. And the Windows ones are, you know, fully supported and up to date. So there is some comparison difference there. Running CUDA, which is the optimized graphics processing mode for NVIDIA cards, the averages were almost matched. Mac trailed behind Windows on average three to seven percent on both the HD and 4K renders. Mac was definitely the most consistent in its render time. Every now and then Windows would just be really slow and come in behind Mac. But overall on average, the render speeds for Windows was always just a little bit faster than Mac. Now running OpenCL for the processing mode, Windows crashed all the time. It was a horrible experience. And both Windows and Mac ran significantly slower in the render times. So yeah, not really good. Didn't love OpenCL. Experience was pretty horrible. So what is the Windows versus Mac OS verdict? 
Ooh. Well, it kind of doesn't really make much of a difference. It comes down to what your preference is. If you're a Mac person or a Windows person, you're not making a decision based on performance. For us, this settles the difference between Mac and Windows, at least in our minds and really helped us realize that we have not been making a 10 year long mistake of staying in the Mac operating system for our editing. Now let's see if we've been making a big mistake cost wise by going for a Mac over a PC. Is our $10,000 Mac Pro really worth nearly double the price tag of our $5,000 Hack Pro? So on this one, to keep the playing field level, we swapped out our NVIDIA 1080 Ti for a Radeon 7. The Radeon 7 is the most commercially comparable graphics cards to the Vega 2 that we have in our Mac Pro when we got it. Though not an exact match, our Mac Pro is pretty comparable to the specifications of our soon to be retired Hack Pro. So like the last one, we pulled the same project with the same footage on both machines. We switched the graphics processing mode over to the Apple designed Metal, and we ran the same HD and 4K render tests. Once we average out the results, the Mac Pro is consistently getting 25 to 30% faster render times in HD. Once you switch over to the 4K renders, the Mac Pro was consistently faster with about a 5 to 8% increase in render times. Yeah, so in the end, the Mac Pro 2019 was faster, but it cost a whole lot more. Or does it? But first, let's go back and answer the question that was set up by the first test. Since from the test it shows that both operating systems are equal in speed, why have we as a company decided to stay in the Mac environment instead of going to the Windows environment? Listen, I grew up on Windows. I really dislike the pretentious attitudes of some of the Mac users in my high school and always argued about how you could customize things so much better on Windows. Well, years later, I switched over to Mac for two reasons. First, I found them to be very low maintenance on the software side. By the nature of Apple building both the hardware and the software, all the support for the hardware is built into the software. This is great because you never have to go chasing down firmware updates and drivers and stuff like that. And it even comes to the simplicity in installing stuff. In order to run the test on Windows, I had to get everything up to date so that it could be comparable to the Mac. It literally took me 15 restarts to get everything up to date, and it was horrible. It was excruciating. I forgot how much I hate restarts. I even had a reboot just to update DaVinci. I can do updates all day long on a Mac before I hit like a system critical update that has to restart a computer. So yes, with that, Windows tends to be cheaper on the upfront cost, but when we have seven machines, for our editing, we then would have to pay someone to be keeping all of our Windows computers up to date just because of the very nature of how the hardware support for PC components is just all over the place. And it becomes very cumbersome and very time consuming. Then the second reason why I chose to switch over to Mac is the fast ease of use. There's multiple things built into the operating system that we have found that just save us tons of time. One of those examples is the preview function Mac. Now I know there's some options to add things like this that are similar to Windows, but just the built-in function of preview on Mac is amazing. It has saved us so much time. The ability to just hit the space bar and see the full file no matter what codec. In our line of work, we have hundreds and hundreds of files and being able to quickly pop a file and be like, oh, that's shot number whatever, boom, next file, pop it up. Oh, that's shot number whatever has saved us hours and hours when it comes to organizing media on big projects. And that saves us a lot of money. Then there's just other small things in the ease of use that just makes it a lot easier for our team to edit on. Simple things as a cohesive menu layout. And one of my favorites, the mission control pages, where you can just have a full set of programs set up on one page and swipe to the next page and have all those other programs set up. Really is helpful for switching between multiple projects that are running simultaneously. But in the end, when it comes to Mac versus Windows, it's your preference. What works the best for the type of work that you're doing? What allows you to work the most efficient? And go with that operating system. So now the second question, Hack versus Mac. We all know, and there's no argument, that PC components are cheaper than Mac components. It's kind of given. So besides it being illegal to do a Hackintosh, and besides the fact that the Mac Pro was slightly faster in render times, why did we decide to pay $10,000 for one Mac Pro when we could have actually bought two $5,000 Hack Pros? So physically, it cost us $5,000 to build our Hackintosh, but it also took us 42 hours of editing .kext files and changing configurations so that we could actually get our Hackintosh to run stable. In terms of a normal project on average, our company makes about $250 per person working hour. So at 42 hours of time that we didn't have certain people working because they were working on the Hackintosh, that's $10,500 in opportunity cost. 
lost. Now, on top of that, we've had four major down days related to the Hackintosh over the past two years. Each of those times that it broke, it was kind of on average 12 hours to get it repaired. So again, looking at the opportunity costs, those 12 hours cost us $3,000 each time. So it's nearly $12,000 in opportunity cost of time that was spent working on the Hackintosh to get it back up to operating status when we could have instead been working on a client project making money. It's not always the cost of the physical item that we need to keep in mind. So in the end, the answer to the second question of why a hack versus Mac, it comes to where do you want to save money versus where do you want to save time? And we chose to save time with purchasing the Mac Pro. If you're looking for more insights on the money side of filmmaking, this episode is brought to you by the Filmmaker's Kit. For a YouTube audience, you can get free access to the first half of the film production pricing guide. Learn how to charge your clients for what you're worth and start pricing professionally. Just click the link below. Also, be sure to check out the behind the scenes of the New York project that we showcased in this episode. We talk about what we learned about traveling with equipment and some great tips for shooting B-roll. We'll see you on the next video.